And I'm wondering what in your mind would be, uh, uh, you know, the right kind or, or the kinds of confidence building signals that either Iranians need to send to the U.S. or the U.S. needs to send to Iran and how you might see that different between a Trump and a Biden administration to actually get the process uh, uh, going. And, and, and one thinks maybe there is an early phase, but if there's progress towards something bigger, which I know the Americans want, that, you know, more than just going back to JCPOA, but opening the door to additional conversations. What, what is it that needs to be done to repair the damage of the past four years, at least signaling in a positive way? Well, I think time is the first and foremost thing that will be needed, right? Um, just to kind of uh, put a, I guess, fine point on it. Um, when Iran decided to return to the negotiating table in 2012 initially, and then, you know, with, with just the United States kind of in the uh, secret meetings that were taking place, and then later on at in the open with the rest of the P5 plus one um, in 2013, uh, one of the things that was often said at the highest levels of the Iranian government was, you know, we can't trust the United States to uh, abide by this deal that we're about to strike. And what is fascinating is that, you know, in the United States, you, you'll recall this in the in that time frame, much of the conversation was about how do we prevent Iran from cheating? How do we prevent Iran from violating the deal? How do we prevent Iran from withdrawing from the deal? Uh, but of course, Iran had the same sort of conversations and had the same ideas about the United States. But of course, from a U.S. perspective, it was unimaginable, I think, that the United States would be the one that would pull the plug on the on the deal first. Um, so I think there is now a bit of a reckoning in the United States that this is something we have to be dealing with, that yes, a, a potential future administration, even if, say, you have a President Biden for a while, he returns to the JCPOA, but then if he loses again in four or eight years and you have a Republican who replaces him, you could very well have a um, that, that administration pull the plug on the JCPOA and what are, whatever other arrangements would have been made to deal with other areas of Iranian um, behavior policies. So that's the, that's the first thing to, to consider. And I'm not sure that there is a whole lot of remedy for Iran to feel secure in that kind of, in whatever arrangement it decides to enter into. Uh, because even with treaties, as we are again seeing with the Trump administration, uh, yes, it's a bit more difficult and perhaps politically costly to pull out of a deal, but uh, of a treaty, but uh, it's not impossible. So. There is no real sort of airtight measure that the United States can can take to show Iran that it would not withdraw from a deal down the line. But I think there's a few things that the U.S. can do uh, pretty um, immediately after uh, a, um, a, a new administration. Actually, these are things that even the Trump administration could do, though I, I suspect that it's not really going to be inclined to do so. Uh, one would be, you know, overturning the, the travel ban, which is disproportionately affecting Iranians. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a concern for the regime. It is a concern for, you know, the population and, of course, um, Iranian Americans who don't get to see their families. Uh, but I think it would be a signal of sort of good faith that this is, you know, a, a, a change and this is a new sort of administration that is coming to power. A second one would be to deal with the humanitarian uh, trade situation, which, as we know, although U.S. sanctions are not directly targeting uh, the import of uh, medical devices, medicine, et cetera, into Iran, um, they are certainly uh, making it much more challenging. And so uh, a new administration could uh, sort of send, you know, help facilitate that humanitarian trade, uh, which would not only be the right thing to do, but I think would again be the, the right sort of signal uh, that it is willing to engage, that it's not looking to harm um, Iranians uh, for the sake of harming Iranians, that it's, you know, uh, it's sort of looking at sanctions as a tool rather than a, what it seems like an end in itself under this current administration. On the Iranian side, um, I think you could see a number of things um, that Iran could do as confidence building measures. One would be, and they haven't done this in, in a while, but it's something that happens periodically, uh, IRGC, the IRGC Navy harassing the US uh, Navy in the Persian Gulf in the Strait of Hormuz. So that would be one area to sort of de-escalate tensions. And the second area would be in Iraq where again, Iranian proxies have been 
targeting uh, U.S. not just forces, but also diplomatic facilities um, and uh, U.S. interests. So that would be another place where sort of getting a time out, I think, would be a good signal and also would also create the space for negotiations to move forward.